Okay, so it's been about a month with two of the most anticipated phones of 2022, the iPhone 14 Pro and the 14 Pro Max. And if I were to sum up how my experience has been with both of these devices during this time, it's been ultra familiar, but in a different way, which I know really doesn't make a lot of sense, but try and stick with me here. The iPhone 14 and the 14 Pro Max are no doubt iterative updates from last year, as there's a lot of components that are virtually the same as previous iPhones of the past, but they also offer users some new features that many of us have been waiting for for a long time and others that are truly unique and quite unexpected. So one month later, it's been really weird trying to explain to people whether or not the iPhone 14 Pros are worth it. So today, I want to go into more detail about those similarities and differences that these phones offer to ultimately help you decide whether or not the iPhone 14 Pro is the right phone for you. And the first area in which the iPhone 14 Pro and the 14 Pro Max are going to be ultra familiar is with its form factor as it's virtually identical to previous iterations before it. And this encompasses not only the same dimensions, but also the same build materials, hardware, and the same fundamental design language. So if you're familiar with either the iPhone 12 Pro or the 13 Pro variants and were hoping for some physical design changes to the 14 Pros, they're really not there. Minus a slightly larger camera housing and some new colors, the iPhone 14 Pro and the 14 Pro Max are near impossible to visually distinguish between the older Pros before it. Now that said, I don't think that there's anything wrong with that. And that's mainly because the form factor, as familiar as it may be, it's still fantastic in so many ways. The Pro versions of the iPhones are probably probably some of the best together mobile devices in the world today as you get access to some of the most premium build materials as well as Apple's incredibly high standards when it comes to quality control. So don't let the similarities fool you, the 14 Pros are outstanding from a physical design standpoint and are still some of the best phones in the looks department as well. Now I was a bit skeptical around the new colors but the new deep purple has grown on me and it looks particularly nice when it catches the light off this frosted finish. But dude, the new space black is hands down my new favorite colorway, it's hard to show on camera but it's got this dark stealthy vibe that looks incredible in person. So all in all, if you're already on something like the 12 Pro or the 13 Pro and were wishing for a design overhaul with this year's offerings, you're gonna be disappointed. But if this is your first step into the Pro iPhone world, or if you're fine with keeping the way things are, you're likely gonna love the iPhone 14 Pro's form factor. So you may not get many differences at all when it comes to physical design, but where the iPhone 14 Pro and the 14 Pro Max truly start to show their unique characteristics is with its display, kind of. And again, I put it that way because from a raw hardware perspective, the panel itself is quite similar to previous panels Apple has used in the past. So you're still getting the Super Retina XDR OLED displays with the 14 Pros that have a proven track record of strong performance. Everything comes off sharp, you get bright punchy colors and stellar contrast, and probably my favorite feature, you get the 120 hertz variable refresh rate with that super smooth UI navigation experience. Now where the display starts to offer something different is number one, the new pill cutout. Rather than having the infamous notch, the 14 Pros come with a slightly more immersive screen with this oval shaped cutout at the top. One month later, I still contend on its own, this cutout is a bit more distracting than the older notch, mainly because this odd amount of screen on the top that to me makes the cutout more pronounced. The notch may have been bigger, but it faded away in the background a lot better. That said though, the new pill cutout is tied to quite possibly the most significant unique feature on the iPhone 14 Pro and that's Dynamic Island. And look, it's been a month and there's been a lot of heated debate on whether or not Dynamic Island is just a gimmick. I'm just gonna come out and say it, it's definitely not and love or hate Apple, it's a very well executed new feature. Now I say it's not a gimmick because that term is often applied to optional features that you can choose to use or not use and that's not the case for Dynamic Island. It's an embedded part of the user experience so it's pretty unavoidable and in that regard, it's a much riskier type of feature addition. If Dynamic Island sucked, even in the slightest, it would essentially ruin the phone because it's not like you could just turn it off, it's a baked in component of iOS on the 14 Pro. And I think that only serves to underscore how good of a job Apple did with this integration because Dynamic Island isn't anything revolutionary by any means, it's pretty basic stuff when it comes to functionality, but it's extremely well integrated into the software and it makes the entire user experience feel more refined and ultimately new. Dynamic Island to me is the biggest differentiator between the iPhone 14 Pro and literally every other iPhone in existence. And one month later, I think it's a big success. Now the other part of the iPhone 14 Pro's display that is also new, I don't share the same positive sentiment about and that's the always on display. So Apple went in an interesting direction when it came to this feature as many always on displays usually only show the basics like the time and maybe some widgets on a black background. The iPhone 14 Pro on the other hand displays the entire lock screen and everything on it just slightly dimmed. And my impression of it one month later is that it's not something I'd consider bad, it's just really distracting because I always think the phone is unlocked. And if you follow me at all, you probably know I ended up having to turn the always on display off mainly because it was having an impact on my desired battery life. Now two things here, number one, 
hopefully you caught the keyword desired in my last sentence because I don't want to make it seem as though leaving this feature on will completely obliterate your battery. Sure, it won't perform as well as having it off, I think that's obvious, but leaving it on won't make the iPhone 14 Pro unusable from a power standpoint. But that leads me into the second thing that I want to say about the always on display. I think the reason why you may run into battery challenges with it on is not necessarily because the way it's designed, but mainly due to the new peak brightness that the displays on the iPhone 14 Pros have. The displays can get super bright now, which is great, especially when you're in direct sunlight, but the auto brightness settings also impact the always on display. So if you're out in direct sunlight a lot, even though your phone is asleep, the always on display is compensating for the environment that you're in and makes the screen stay really bright for a long time. So it makes sense that it could have a noticeable impact on battery life. Now, I do hope that through a software update, Apple gives iPhone 14 Pro users a more simplified, less power hungry option with the always on display because I think it would be really useful. But one month later, I'm not the biggest fan of how it is today. And that brings me to the last thing about the iPhone 14 Pro and the 14 Pro Max that's both different and similar, and that's its cameras. So from a hardware standpoint, one of the major changes the new 14 Pros brings to the table is a new 48 megapixel primary sensor that's larger on paper and more capable than any camera before it. You also get an improved ultra wide and selfie camera when it comes to the spec sheet, as well as some new computational photography features like Photonic Engine that leverages the horsepower of the A16 Bionic to better integrate things like Deep Fusion earlier during the image processing process. So all good stuff, but one month later, none of this really makes the new cameras on the 14 Pros that much better than what we've already seen. The stills coming straight out of the camera look pretty similar in quality with last year. It does do a fair amount better in low light conditions with the larger sensor, but overall the improvements aren't as major as the spec sheet would kind of give off. Now don't get me wrong, it's still fantastic, probably top 3 if I were to bench it against the top flagship phones today, but it's just not as big of an improvement than what I was hoping for. And the same could be said about video quality, you get the same class leading 4K video on both the front and back cameras, and the quality is fantastic, but no major improvements from what we've already seen. The new active state stabilization and 4K cinematic mode both do well, but they're not exclusive to the 14 Pro models and some may find no need for these features based on the type of shooting that they do. So all that to say, one month later, the iPhone 14 Pro and the 14 Pro Max have been great to use, but it's such a weird phone to recommend. For me, I would personally take a pass if you're on the 12 or 13 Pro already. There's just not enough here to warrant an upgrade, especially as these phones are expensive and there is a chance that you're still paying off the phone that you have. But I do think that the iPhone 14 Pro would be a great upgrade if you're on an iPhone 12 or under, Apple has done enough differentiation now between their Pro and non-Pro models where getting the 14 Pro will make for a noticeably newer and better user experience. Now that said, I think a good argument could also be made to just hold out until the iPhone 15 if you've waited this long. There should be more of a design overhaul next year that should also usher in some more meaningful new features, so if you're not clamoring to get your hands on a new iPhone today, holding out might be the best decision for you. But hey, that's just me, and I want to know what you guys think. What do you guys think about the iPhone 14 Pros? Do you think they're worth it in today's competitive landscape? Or is it too similar to what we've already seen? Curious to get your thoughts, let me know what you guys are thinking in the comments down below. And in case you're thinking about getting the regular 14s, that's probably a bad idea, so watch these videos to find out why.